way that my mom has impacted my faith is by showing me that even though life is almost never easy, you can always trust God to take care of it. And she's been an amazing model for how to keep your faith and your hope, even when life is tough. My mom has had an impact on my faith by first of all, giving me a good example on how to lead others to God and lead myself um, closer to God. And she's also given me the best advice on how to have a good firm foundation in God and um, a strong faith in Him. My mom has impacted my faith a lot and she's prayed with me and gone on walks with me and just showed me how great God's creation is. And it reminds me every day to praise Him and believe in Him. And it reminds me how much He loves me that He said, I'm on that great my way. Thank you. My mom has helped me with my faith because she has been an amazing leader and um, example of how to uh, just be loving to everybody and uh, just showing kindness to people and just not like um, judging them just off the bat. And uh, she's helped me learn how to pray a lot, just like uh, not just ask for things, but also just be thankful for what I have. And um, yeah. My mom helped me grow in my faith by doing lots of things. And some of those things were show, helping me understand different parts of the Bible so that it made more sense when they were confusing. She has also taught me how to pray so that I can connect more with God. Instead of just talking to Him, I can listen to Him talking to me. I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Judy Amos. One of the spiritual legacies that she was passed and has passed on down to me uh, was praying with my grandmother and now praying with my aunts over all sorts of things, family as well as other people. Um, and they are real prayer warriors. And she has passed that on to me. Our mom is Ann Hayes. My mom has impacted my faith by being strong and hardworking. My mom has impacted my faith by showing love to each and every individual, no matter their status, just like Jesus does. We all agree on that. And I think just our mom, having us go to church for an hour and reminding us that church is only an hour and you can make a difference um, within one hour of somebody's life is super important. And just how she shared her testimonies with others and that it's genuine and real has really impacted us all. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Maybe those who are even watching us online just want to just wish you a, an amazing day. And hopefully everybody's going to serve you today because you deserve it so much. Well, if you're new here, my name is Jim. I'm the lead pastor here. And today with it being Mother's Day, I just want to talk today about just a legacy life and just some key things and what a legacy life really looks like. And just moms are just really good at that. It just really just passing things on to their, to their kids. And so we're just going to dive into that a little bit today. But this, this past week, I didn't even tell my wife this, um, last Monday morning, I woke up in the middle of the night. Anybody ever wake up in the middle of the night? You know, it's like as you get older, I don't know why you wake up in the middle of the night sometimes. But, you know, I was in a deep sleep and dreaming, and I wake up, and I, we, we've got this old school alarm clock sitting across the room on a dresser. How many keep an old school alarm clock around, right? And just for backup, right? Just in case daylight savings, you don't trust your cell phones, right? So that thing's sitting over there, bright red LED lights. And I wake up and, and I'm looking to see what time did I wake up And the numbers are just cruising by going up. And I'm like, am I dreaming? You know, is the bomb going to go off? I mean, what's going on here? Right? It's like, I'm just watching these numbers. So I'm just kind of rubbing my eyes, trying to look at this thing. It's like, forget it. I went back to sleep. And then I woke up in the morning when my alarm went off and I look over there at that alarm clock and the numbers are still running up, you know, and it's like, what is going on? You know, it's like, and so I walk over there and I, I realized that my wife had laid a picture frame on top of the, of the little clock radio and it was holding the snooze button down. And for whatever reason, it makes the numbers just like go, they're just like running up. But, it, but I just kind of, you know, as I'm waking up and I'm looking at that, I'm just kind of chuckling to myself. Anybody have just weird thoughts? You just kind of laugh at yourself, but I'm sitting there thinking, isn't that what life is like sometimes? It's like the time is just flying by. 
And it was just this moment, right? I just kind of paused for a moment in my mind, and it's like asking myself this question, what are you doing with the time that you've been given? Right? Because the time really just goes by so fast. You blink, and if you have kids, your kids are grown up, and it's the next thing you know, it's like, where did all that time go to? And so I just kind of paused, and I just asked myself, what are you doing with the time you have been given? And, and I came across, across this phrase this week, and I just want to put it on the screen. It says, what we do for ourselves usually dies with us. What we do for others lives beyond us. Right? And, and that's really what a legacy life looks like. That, that we are to be passing on to the next generation. What we do for ourselves just kind of dies with us. If I just live a self-focused life, then that's all that there was, right? And just life continues. But if we do for others, that's what we pass on, the impact that we can have on those around us. And so it made me think of this, this passage here, Psalm, it's a Psalm of David, Psalm 34, 39, verse 4. It says this, David, he comes to this same reality as he's just going through his, his life and he just kind of pauses for a moment. He says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. And that's what came to my mind. As soon as I saw that clock, I was like, what is going on here? Why is the clock racing up? And it's like, it's so true. Our, our life, Peter, what he wrote, it's not in the notes. It's like, it's like a vapor. I mean, one moment, it's, it just goes by so fast, so quickly. And so David, he, he kind of makes it this prayer towards God. And he says, God, remind me. Remind me that every day counts. Remind me that life just goes by so fast. So when it comes to just this legacy life, our role as, as moms or dads, whether you still have kids at home or not, is to pass on to the next generation. Or maybe you're a grandparent, right? You pass it on to the next generation. Or maybe you're an aunt or an uncle, right? We're, we have this impact as a Christ follower, right? Right? Everybody that's here in this room, and it's not on my voice, those are watching us online, as Christ followers, we have this obligation to pass on what God has entrusted to us to the next generation. That's what a legacy life looks like. Now, what's interesting, interesting is you kind of look at statistics and studies. They say that the two greatest influencers in a child's life are their parents and their grandparents. Right now, how many of you remember just things that your grandparent had has done for you? Every, every, how many of you still do something today because something you picked up from your grandparent? How many of you still yell at your kids because your grandpa did? I'm just kidding. Don't say that. <laughs> right? How, how many of you have a, a an activity that you enjoy doing because of a grandparent? Right? I mean, I I love fishing because both sets of my grandparents enjoyed fishing. My grandfather got me my very first fishing pole. And my brother won, right? So we fought over him, right? But, but we got our fishing poles, and they would go fishing. And, and then we learned to enjoy fishing, and I still enjoy that today. My, my, my mom's dad was very creative. He would just make his own lures, and he would build things and make things. And I just remember just always watching those things. And so it's interesting how a grandparent, and then you got your, your parents, right? The things that they pass on. My dad has always been, no, my dad's sitting up here. He's always been a MacGyver. He could rig anything. Now, any of you that have been around me for any length of time, you know there's a teller rig to almost everything. This whole building is teller rigged, right? It's, it's, it's just barely going to hold up, right? Because I, I figured out some way to do something because I watched my dad do it for years, right? And there's certain things that we we do. We, we have skill sets and things that we do and we enjoy that we pass those things on. Parents and grandparents are the two greatest influences on a child's life. And so it's so important that we live this legacy life, passing it on to the next generation. So what I want to just look at today, just in the little time we've got, is just how to live a legacy life. And we're just going to look at three simple things. There's a ton of things I could dive into, but I just kind of have three important things that I want us to kind of look at today. The first one, number one, is this, is to say the words God wants you to say. To say the words 
that God wants you to say. Now, I've been, I've been in ministry for over 30 years, and I know I don't look that old. I'm only 28, but still, I've been in ministry a long time, and I've done a lot of funerals over the years, and those are always really hard moments, just, just grieving over the loss of a loved one. And, and in those moments before the, a loved one passes away and I'm with family or you're there at, at the celebration of life, one of the things that you hear more than anything is, man, I just wish I had another opportunity just to say something. Just to say something, say things that I never said, that I just wish I wanted to, but I, I never did. And it's so important that we use our words and we say the words that God wants us to say to those around us. Because I'm just being honest, I'm a talker. And it's easy. It's easy to say a lot of things, right? And, and you know if you're around anybody that's a talker, sometimes you just got to walk away, Right? <laughs> Because most of what they're saying, there goes Justin now, right? Because most of what they're saying, you're just like, oh my gosh. How many of you hear, they say the same thing over and over again, right? Oh, we've already, we've already, how many times you get to tell that story, right? And sometimes when, we, when we, we say so many things, but we don't say the things that need to be said, Right? It's so easy to say a lot of things, but never say the things that need to be said. So I want to just challenge us, we're looking at this today, and encourage us to be intentional with our words in the time that we have. Be intentional to say the things that you need to say. Let me just ask a question. It's not up on the screens, but if you're married, what is something that your spouse needs to hear you say that you tend not to say? If you're a parent and you have kids, what do your kids need to hear from you? What do you need to say that you don't say enough or haven't said? If we just take those opportunities and say the things that we need to say, because it's so easy to let time, sitting there watching that clock and the numbers are just running up. It's like, wow, time can go by so fast and it's so easy to miss the opportunities to say what we need to say. Got another little phrase here, just want to put up here on the screens. What you say and how you say it is what you pass on to those around you. Sometimes we can say things, but how we package what we say is not always helpful. It's not always winful, right? It's not always winsome, right? You can say, I love you in a way that makes it feel like you hate them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? So it's not just what we say, but it's how we say it to those around us. So today I want to dive into some text, and we're going to start off just looking at the book of Proverbs. And the unique thing about the book of Proverbs is Solomon is a father, and, he, and he's writing to, he starts off in this book addressing his son, and then as he goes through it, he's addressing his, his children. Now Solomon is wanting to pass on some words. He's got things that he wants his kids to hear him say to them. And I want to start off with um, Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse 4. And this is what he says. He says, my father taught me. Right? There's something that was said to him that's being passed on. He's talking about King David. David invested in his son. He said, my father taught me. He said, so take my words to heart. Follow my commands and you will live. What my dad had to say to me, what he's passed on to me, these are important words. This is a legacy. He's saying, I'm passing on to you. Verse 5, he says, get wisdom. Now, that's kind of a loaded phrase right there, get wisdom. This whole, chap, this whole book, collection of Proverbs, is all about the wisdom of, of God. This Hebrew word, chukmah, which is the mind, the heart of, of God. And what Solomon is saying here is, I, if there's one thing I want you to understand. I want you to understand the heart and the mind of God. And what God has to say to us, what my father has passed on to me, I want to pass on to you. And so he said, get wisdom, develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn, or turn away from them. Because these words that I'm giving you are what I've learned from the wisdom of God. What he has passed on to me, I'm passing on to you. And this whole collection of Proverbs about getting the mind of God, the heart of God, the chokmah, the wisdom of God. So I'm going to skip down to verse 20. 
And he says this. He says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Right? Isn't it interesting? You get to the New Testament. Jesus asks the same question over and over again. And he, asks, he says, yeah, Mike says, are you listening? Are you listening? Other translations say, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Right? Because Jesus comes on the scene. He's like, look, I've come here to bring the heart of the Father. And I want you to listen, listen intently is what I'm saying. Solomon's saying the same thing. Pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. And then he gets to verse 23. It's a verse that many Christians memorize. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And what Solomon's he's saying here is just, look, is there, there's something I really want you to understand here. I want you to really get this. It's like, I want you to get the, the heart, the mind of God, the wisdom of God. But here's the deal. He's kind of like he's pausing right here as he's writing this. He says, you got to guard your heart above everything else. And you, the way you guard your heart is with the wisdom and the mind of God. And the words of God and what God wants to say, what God wants you to, to understand and grasp and live. That if you, if you get these things in you, it will change your life. And so he says, guard your heart above all else for these words, this mind and heart of God. It's going to determine the course and the direction of your life. What you do and how you do it. What you say and how you say it. And so in an indirect way, we could kind of pause and, and ask ourselves a question. And sometimes it's just good in life that we pause and ask ourselves deep questions, right? What would you say, if you have kids, that your kids would say determines the course and direction of your life? If you're a grandparent and you were to ask your grandkids, what would they say determines the course and the direction of your life? or other family members, or neighbors, co-workers, others around you in your sphere of influence, what would they say determines the course and direction of your life? Because there's this legacy that we are passing on, whether we realize it or not, we are passing this legacy on to the next generation. And Solomon says, if there's one thing you get, he says, guard your heart, protect your heart, because there's so many things, as you go through the book of Proverbs, so many things that are going to lure you away. They're going to be pulling for your attention. He talks about money. He, he talks about relationships, right? He, he talks about just immorality. All kinds of things are going to be pulling at you. Your pride. There's so many things. Arguments, your words. So many things are just going to be pulling at you. He says, above all else, my child, my children, listen to these words. This is what I want you to get because what you do. And what you say, it's going to determine the course and direction of your life. So let's just put that, that question up there. What determines the course of your life? And we should all be able to answer that question. And the answer to that question is what we're passing on. It's part of a legacy that we are passing on to the next generation. There's another passage going back in time to the time of Moses. God calls Moses up to this mountain, and while he's up on the mountain, he gives him the law, which we know as the Mosaic Law. We get the, the Torah, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He gives him this, and it's all just understanding the heart of who God is, and all the boundaries, all the commands, all the laws. We get the, the Ten Commandments, and we're going to pick up in a time where God's people are getting ready to go into, they've, they've exited Egypt through all these signs and wonders, and they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and God says, look, I want you, Moses, to take these words and pass these on to my people, because my heart and desire for them is to leave a legacy for the generations to come. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, this is what God speaks through Moses to his people. He says, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Now, it's the same kind of mindset that Solomon had, right? Because what God's trying to tell him is like, when you enter into the promised land, there's going to be all kinds of things pulling at your, for your attention, all kinds of things that glisten, 
all kinds of things that are shiny. Right? A couple years ago, we studied the book of Joshua. And some of you guys remember that when they first started going to conquer, after they went in and, and the walls of Jericho collapsed, they gave them clear instructions not to take any plunder, not to do anything. But there was one guy, one guy that impacted the whole community of God's people, one guy, and his name was Achan, right? Because Achan just had an Achan for something that glittered, right? He, he, he stole, he took several things and hid them in his tent, all right? So, so God is speaking to Moses to tell, deliver this to people. He says, observe these things. Verse 2, why? So that you, and it's not just about you, right? Your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. I just want to kind of pause here for a moment. This is so important. Sometimes I think when we go back and we read some of the things in the Old Testament law, it's easy to fall into this trap, especially when it comes to maybe parenting or how we live out our our Christian faith, that we tend to think it's all about the rules. Follow the rules. If you follow the rules, your life is going to be great. Sounds real encouraging, doesn't it? (laughs) Right? And and there's these other phrases that are packaged around there. God says, look, my heart's desire for you is to go into this land that's filled with milk and honey so that you can enjoy a long life. I want you to enjoy life. It's not about just keeping the rules. That's a part of it. But we all do that as parents, right? It's like our kids, when they're little, they're just learning. Their brains are still forming, and they're trying to figure things out, and they're crawling across the floor, and they're headed towards an electrical outlet. And it's like, what does this do? And they got their little metal toy in their hand, and they're getting ready to stick it in there. And you're like, just go right on ahead there, kiddo. (laughs) No, you don't do that. Right? You run over there and you grab them. Right? And like, you just ruined their fun. No, we're protecting them. There's boundaries that are in place because we know that if they stick that in there, their life is going to be changed drastically. Their hairstyle is going to be different. It's going to be a crazy mess, right? And so we, there's boundaries that God establishes so that we can raise our kids to enjoy this life that God has given them, right? And so, so it's so easy to fall into this trap. Now, here's what I want us to understand. It's a phrase I learned years ago in some of the early years of my, my formation as a Christ follower, and I got it as a bullet point here. I just understanding this, that more is caught than taught. Sometimes it's easy just to want to lay down the law and enforce the rules, but it's the way we say things. It's how we say things. God just didn't show up with an iron fist. When Jesus came, he came in humility. He came as a suffering servant, right? Sacrificing for his beloved bride. And it's the same way for us. And so it's not just what we say, but how we say it and how it's packaged because more is caught than taught. And so how we model what we're saying and we package it in the right way, the way God's heart wants it packaged, it makes all the difference in the world. Then you don't grow up with this religion mindset of rules, but you grow up with a relational mindset with falling in love and embracing the heart of God. That's what it means to fear the Lord, is having this reverent awe of who God is. That, that we, as we're pursuing him with all of our heart, that we're modeling it for our kids to do the same thing. More is caught than taught. So then it goes on in verse 3, as, as Moses is passing this on to God's people. And he says, hear Israel. It's this whole thing. It's like, listen to what's being said. Hear Israel. Now here's another interesting thing I want to point out here. The world Israel, the context of what is being said is in the context of community. That's such an important thing and how we pass things on to the next generation. It's in the context of the community of faith. 
the community of God's people, this large assembly, some million people, as Moses is passing this on. And he says, be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly. See, it's just God's wanting to pass on the blessings to his people in the, a land that's flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you what God has in store for you is good. It is good. He's a God of grace and mercy and, and love. Yes, a while back we talked about just his justice. But he didn't come and rule with an iron fist. He came for us to understand him and grow in, in relationship with him. And understanding the boundaries. And when we live within the boundaries that God has established, our life will go well. And our tendency, as Solomon is passing on to his kids, and as God is passing on to his people, our tendency is to always push the boundaries right? Nobody drives the speed limit today, <laughs> right? There's a few maybe, but it's like, it's like we just got to push the limits, right? What we we, we kind of know there's like this little rule. If we, if we go a little bit over, right? Usually we won't get a ticket, right? We'll just get a warning. But what's crazy is you heard me talk about this before over the years. Today, nobody even wants to stop at stop signs or stoplights, right? And we know that when you don't follow boundaries, it just becomes a disaster, right? But the heart of God is he's trying to communicate to his people, this is what I have in store for you. So when it comes to a legacy life, we got to say the things that God wants us to say to those around us. We need to hear those things. And it's the way that we say them as well. So the first thing is just saying what God wants you to say. The second thing just follows the outflow of this is do the things that God sent you to do. Right now, you've been around me. You've heard me say these phrases. I kind of brought it out several years ago when we first bought the building. It's not enough just to know the word, right? But we have to do the word, right? It's two pedals on a bicycle, right? Got to know the word and do the word. If we're going to get spiritual growth in our lives and movement spiritually in our lives, we got to have both pedals going. We got to know the word and do the word. This is what James tells us. James one twenty two tells us this. He says, "Just don't listen to God's word." And what James is saying here, this is an easy trap for all of us to fall into, right? You know, and sometimes we joke about it. It's like, just do what I said, not what I do, not how I do it, right? Just do what I say, right? Right? But that's not what we're passing on, right? We're passing on the bad model, right? She said, don't, so James says, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. We got we to put it into motion. We got to put it into action in our lives. So let's go back to um, just Deuteronomy. There's this whole picture here that God's passing on, this picture of just a legacy life that God desires for his people to have. And it all starts with this. Verse 5, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. This is the key part of it. This is what you're modeling, that you have to be doing this. Right? It's not just enough to know the words that you're hearing, but putting them into action, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with your whole being. Verse 6, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. It's supposed to be a part of who we are, part of our lives. Right? Verse 7 says, impress them. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Verse 8, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Now, the Jews actually did that. They'd have these little frontlets, and these little packs they put on their, on their wrists. It was a constant reminder. But we all know how it is. Sometimes we have to have these reminders, but it's easy just for things to become ritual over time and lose sight of it. But the whole heart behind this, this part of it is it's supposed to be a part of every aspect of our lives. When we get up, when we, when we lie down, when we're about, when we're walking, walking in the grocery store, walking into work, talking with other people, no matter what we do, every part of our lives is to be reflective that we love the Lord our God. And we're, we're living, as we talked about in this last series we did on eternity, as citizens of heaven. Right? It's representatives of, of God. This is the legacy life that we pass on. Verse 9 says, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Your house, 
The place where you dwell is to be marked. Now, here he's talking about to physically do that, but it's more the implication is not just to have a physical mark on your door frame. It's that your house represents a place of safety, a place where the presence of God is established. That when those walk through your doors, they know that you love the Lord your God. Not because you've got crosses and phrases plastered all over the walls. It's the manner of our lives. That's, that's <laughs> you can take them down now, right? It's, it's the, the things that we do, it's the things that we say. That's the legacy that we pass on to our kids, our grandkids, our nephews, our nieces, whoever is around that. They need to see us doing it so that they can catch it. It needs to be evident in our lives. Now, how do we do that? Let me just kind of give you some key things here. I just got some bullet points here. One is share your God stories, your kids, your grandkids. Maybe you've got nieces and nephews that come with you. Whatever it is, they need to hear your God stories. How has God impacted your life? Maybe some of the amazing things you've experienced along the way in your journey. They need to hear your stories. Your kids need to hear your stories. Your grandkids need to hear your God stories. And just simply, it's a simple question. What is God doing in your life right now? And my challenge for you and all of us is to think about that. This week, what is God doing in your life right now that you could share with someone else? It just helps us to focus, right? What has God sent us to do? What has he put us here for? What is our role? What is our purpose? What does God want us to do? Share your God stories. Part of that is this next one is just sharing your ups and downs. Right? Sometimes we, we just want to just show, you know, it's like we, we've bought into this social media mindset. You know, show all the good things. It's like, oh, man, I wish, wish my family was like that. Their family's always so perfect because that's what they always post on Instagram or Facebook, right? Or Twitter, whatever. It's like, it's like we always, always see other men. What's my wife cook like that? Look, they always got this amazing food. Like, I don't know why people take pictures of food, but they do, and they post it on social media, right? And sometimes it's easy just to show all the highlights. But our, our kids, our grandkids, other family members, they need to hear our, our challenges that we we go through the ups and downs in our life and how God is, has got us through. It's just, it was the third bullet point. Just share how, how God helps you through the challenges. Right? Because there's just some seasons in life where it's just really hard. And when you read through the Psalms, right? The psalmists are crying out. It's like, God, where are you? Why are you not doing anything? Why are you remaining silent? Right? So there's these times where we're just wrestling. They need to see and understand how we wrestle through the things that we wrestle through. Those are the things that leave a legacy that we're passing on to them. Now, Cindy and I, we're, we were far from perfect parents. Our kids are all grown up, thank God, they're out of the house. We, we, we did our job, right, hopefully. But you know what I've come to learn? Parenting never ends. They still call us. They still want things from us. Right? And, and so it never ends. And so until you breathe your last breath, you are always a parent and you always have the opportunity to pass on the legacy that God has given you and entrusted you to pass on to them. And, and just to model, I mean, I see one of the things that we, we talk about a lot, we're a very verbal family. We, we talk a lot, and there's been times through the years when our kids were at home that it would get kind of heated in the house, and, and I'd have to whistle really loud, you know, and say, time out, guys, and we'd have a little family huddle, and we'd sit down. I'm the big mouth in the family, and I would own it. I would. You can ask my kids, and there was times, and I would just say, say, look, guys, I brought this into the family. And it's not good. And it's not right. And we can do better than this. And we just took a moment. And, you know, it's like, would you forgive me? You know, even if I wasn't the culprit of what just happened, I would own it and model it. 
And over the years, one of the things that we worked hard at, we were not perfect parents by any means, but one thing I'd say that we worked hard at more than anything else was having lots of conversations and hard conversations, working through things with the grace and the love of God. And my kids today, it's one of the things that we, we actually joke about it sometimes. It's like, you ruined us. Because nobody else does that. It's hard to find. Especially in today's culture. We don't want to talk about anything. We want to send text messages or just unfriend you. Right? And just not have conversation to ever work through anything. And that's not what God has called us to. So not only do we need to say things the way God wants us to say it, we need to do it the way God wants us to do it and do the things that he's sent us to do and model those things for our kids. So we can just say the things that need to be said. We need to do the things that need to be done. The last thing, number three, is this, is to live the life that God called you to live. Live it out. Now, what I'm, what I'm talking about here is just living missionally for God. Jesus said these words to his disciples, Matthew 4, 19. Jesus called out to them. He says, come and follow me. He said, come and follow me. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you how to live a legacy life. I'm going to show you how to, how to do this in such a way that you guys that are fishermen, that love fishing, you're not just going to fish for fish anymore. You're going to fish for men. I'm going to model a legacy life that's going to carry on to the next generation and the generation and that and the generation after that and the generation after that all the way down to us here today, all because Jesus asked a couple guys to follow him. Now, one of the greatest impacts on my life was a, a former boss of mine when I worked down at IU at the TV station, and, and in his retirement party, I'll never forget this, the, the guy who was the, kind of the, um, the CEO, kind of not CEO, but the head guy at, at the TV station, stood up to speak at his, his retirement party, and, and he asked the question, how many of you guys sitting here in this room were asked to take a walk? And every guy in the room stood up. And you're just like, Whoa. And that was what he was known for. He would, he would pop in. I'd be in the audio booth working on something. He'd pop in and says, what are you doing right now? I said, well, I was doing this. Said, well, you got a couple minutes? Like, let's take a walk. And he would just take me, follow him around. He'd take me up, into the, the, up by the roof, show me where all the HVAC units Like, I didn't go to school for HVAC. He's like, I want you to know how this thing works. This is what feeds the studio, how these baffles are set up to make it sound, you know, absorbing and all this stuff. So if there's ever an issue that's going on, you know where this is. Takes me down to the basement another time. Here's this whole telephony set up down here. This just runs all the telephones in here. I'm like, why is he showing me all this stuff? I don't care, right? But I needed to because he knew that he wasn't going to be around all the time. And he wanted somebody else to know. And he did that with all, through the generations, all these guys that were older than me, Right? I was one of the youngest guys there when he, he retires. But he would always, that was his phrase, he was known for, let's take a walk. And he would take you around, and he would show you and get you doing things that you never would have done. So that when something broke down or something wasn't working, guess who could step in and do it? Because he said, follow me. Let's take a walk. And Jesus, when he pulls his disciples, he said, guys, follow me. I'm going to show you how to do it. And how you do it is the legacy that you're going to pass on to the next generation that's going to be passed on to the generation after that. And so what God wants us to do is to live on mission for him. And so we do that when we, we sit down. I know some of you are really good at it. We sit down with your, your kids. If you still have kids at home and you're, you're at the table, right? And you'll just take some time and let's pray. And, and it's so adorable because it's like I hear these stories. I got grandkids now. And my oldest granddaughter, my my father-in-law is battling cancer right now. But my granddaughter brings it up at the table. Let's pray for Papa. That's a legacy life that we're passing on. That's what matters. Nothing else matters but how we live out this life for Christ, and we're passing it on to those after us. Amen.